true to his word, the Orkish Lord gave us the fastest transport ship in his possession. He also provided us with an experienced crew and many select warriors, and enough provisions for months of travel across the sea. However, he adamantly refused to allow us to hear the news brought by the messenger we saved, and invaded our inquiries about what prompted the conflict between Tyriagaz and the Saurians. To be fair, there is usually no reason why that sort of trivial quarrel should concern us, but the circumstances were strikingly suspicious. With Malkeshar's help, I managed to pinpoint the approximate location of Zochthanol based on a faint dark presence towards the southwest, surely a lingering remainder of Yechnagoth's power. By the time Naya appeared the next morning, we had already set sail. Never before, in my entire life, had I been so far from the forests of the great continent, surrounded by an endless body of water, brimming with all sorts of majestic and dangerous creatures. Aside from our loud crew, the occasional sight of marine beasts and small deserted isles was all there was to distract us from the overwhelming immensity and solitude of the open ocean. In spite of its alluring beauty, the large body felt hostile and menacing to me. Does that make sense? Admittedly, words to describe the incongruous feeling elude me, even now. My fear of the ocean's mysterious nature did not let me sleep well for any single night since we left land. For much of the voyage I stayed awake late during the long darkness, guarding the deck with Malkesha, contemplating the ever-changing mood of the waves, wondering what events continued to transpire on the continent in our absence, reminiscing of the past, pondering my mistakes. After countless days, we finally reached our destination as it was lit up by the setting suns. We carefully planned our landing and decided that it would be best to keep the orcs and the undead waiting aboard the ship while Gallas and I contacted the elves and explained the situation to them. If they once had to survive in the wild, perilous desert, they surely wouldn't have fond memories of such creatures. Episode 1, Scenario 6 of After the Storm, Quenoth Isle, Elves of a Different Land. This place appears to be abandoned. Are you sure this is the correct island? Not completely, but it's possible that the Quenoth Elves just avoid these shores for some reason. Let's explore and try to find them then. Time passes. Maybe we should return to the ship. I'm not really sure about going into the forest at night. It could be dangerous. Why are you hesitating now? Do you remember when we almost lost you in the caves beneath Wesmere? I don't want to risk that occurring again. We don't know why we haven't found any elves here. And is there something you haven't told me? Kalas, I... I hear something moving among the trees. Who are you? And where do you come from? You don't seem to be of our kin. We are elves. There's no need to point at us with those arrows and swords either. We're clearly at a disadvantage here. You do not look or dress like our people. Is this some kind of joke? We are pretty sure we've never seen your faces on this island. They are probably imposters sent by Uriah to destroy our home. Let us explain. Seize them. Stop. How can you not recognize your sylvan ancestors, young girl? Have the Quenoth elves completely forgotten their history after all this time? When did you last see the essence of the forest blazing in the dark? Elinia held a small fire in her hands, illuminating the surroundings with a strong azure light. 
The elves stared in awe at her subtle but effective display of the power of fairy. Some of them stepped back, alarmed, uncertain of what to make of the unusual situation. Come with me. The elves guided us through the forest towards the mountains of the island's heart, without saying a word, word to us. We knew it was best not to ask them any questions, or do anything that could seem suspicious, until we met their authorities. Their clothes, armour and weapons seemed much more primitive compared to those used by Gallus kinsmen. Apparently, much of our craft was forgotten by Quetorel's group and their descendants. As we approached the more populated areas, I noticed that even their building designs were much unlike those of their ancestors. Lord Gallus, son of Kalesar, we found these two strangers on the southeastern shores. They came from the northern seas and seemed to bring the light of Elo with them. Elo, that name. No land dwellers have set foot on this island for a long time. The last recorded landing was centuries ago, when our own kin came here seeking a new home. They made sure no one was left behind on the continent. Tell us, who are you? Sir, I am Gallas, son of Valthier, and this is... Elinia, daughter of Denieth Isal. You bear a strong resemblance to us. Spread your wings, Elinia, albeit unusually pale. Your face is that of an elf, but your clothes and your wings, they are very unlike our own. Where do you come from? From the great continent, from the region we call the far north, beyond the tall heart mountains that grasp the sky and guard the green lands. There, the sun's light has not been enough to burn those beautiful forests forever. We are different to you indeed. We are forest elves, and we have come to seek your help against the great evil that has befallen Hergia. Forest elves? How is that possible? The last our people saw of the great continent were vast deserts plagued with foul orcs, necromancers and human barbarians. There's no green life left on it anymore. Maybe your people didn't travel far enough. Most of the central region fits your description, but there are a few secluded valleys where life has continued to thrive, and the far north is vast enough to allow both humans and orcs to live relatively at peace with each other. That is... Kalasar, the Blade of Elo, destroyed the dark force that once reigned over Erdia, and attempted to erase the last remnants of our kind. What new foe threatens to put an end to our peace now, Daughter of the Forests? The creature slain by his hand was but a servant of a far greater power. The fight is not over yet, and although we have re recently vanquished another minion of hers, the influence she exerts on this world remains as strong as ever. I realise that this may sound overly dramatic, but I speak the truth. For I am the Slayer of Jangor, and Elo guided me back to you in this era, because you have the missing page of our civilization's history. Alessar fought Yechnagoth, the Eater of Souls, and defeated her on this island nearly four centuries ago. The enemy we face now is none other than Uriah, who has amassed an empire of human followers on the Great Continent. Even now, as we speak, they work with the forces of Inferno and their unspeakable creations to destroy all that is left in the world. The elves were left aghast by the mention of the three accursed names. They eyed each other nervously, as though they feared that rocks would fall from the sky in response to the bold revelation. I cannot do miracles, if you need more proof of our claims. At the end of the previous era, you were sent by Elo to protect Elvenkind from the Demon Lord. Now, you have returned to, to us to protect all Ertia from the Fallen Goddess. 
in the near, the power you wield has not been seen by our kin for eons. As much of our forefathers' knowledge perished with them when the spawn of Uriah destroyed their forests. You are a rare gem of whom the entire elvish civilization, and we have no reason to distrust you. We listen to the call of our forest ancestors, and we agree to help you. Don't we all? What kind of help do you need? Necromancy is the least of evils, now that Uriah's minions plague the great continent. In our long journey to this island, we have not only been assisted by the orcs of the far north, but also by a lich who helped us defeat the Chaos Emperor. We will need his help here, so I request that we are allowed to bring our orcish and undead allies to this island. That request is very improper for an elf, to say the least. You surely understand why we can't. It is true that many necromancers have worked together with Uriah's minions to bring doom to the natural inhabitants of the continent, including your own ancestors. But it's also true that knowing whether a creature walks the path of light or the path of darkness does not suffice to distinguish evil from good. As for the orcs, they have been our allies even in the past, when there was only one sun, and all elves lived in the forests of Erdia. We shall allow the orcs and undead to come to assist you once you tell us exactly what you are going to do. But beware that our warriors and priests are ready to take care of them should they do anything suspicious. We require access to the place where Yechnagoth was destroyed. There we go, that is the cutscene. Elves of a different tribe, I believe. Beyond Galas and Anlinde's second hand account of the desert elves' struggle against Yechnagoth, I had not heard the name Elo in a very long time. It is just one of many names used in old myths to refer to the guardian of the arcane flame, a deity like figure said to have given life to all fairy beings, including us elves. Nobody knows exactly how or when those tales first appeared, but it is evident that the Quenoth elves have forgotten, misinterpreted and exaggerated them over time. These people thrive and live in peace, despite having lost much of our civilization's knowledge and skills. But it was their faith that led them to challenge fate and build a new future, not just for their race, but for all living creatures under the suns. Our gratitude and respect will never suffice to pay that debt off. Which makes it all the more shameful that I couldn't think of a better justification for our presence than Elo's guidance. I never really gave much credit to those ancient creation myths in the first place. And was it really necessary to boast of my past deeds to earn our descendants' trust? Then again, somehow their head priestess did not seem to find a problem with attributing Django's downfall to a messenger of the goddess instead of the goddess herself. Again, I find myself reflecting upon the simple and idyllic lifestyle of our kin on this island. Perhaps it's for the best that they do not feel the need to aim higher. Those of us who live to see Jango's rule know well how dire the consequences of ambition and revenge can be. Okay, that was a dialogue only scenario, so now we are on to scenario 7 The Search for the Past, with a cutscene, I believe, called Resolutions. We were told Yechnagoth originally controlled a citadel in the heart of Zochthanon, where her body resided. Although both the body and the citadel were destroyed by Galassar's people, we suspected that there was much more to find deep under the earth. On the next day, we descended into the caves nearby to search for more remains of the place. As I expected, 
we found some unusually clean walls, concealing an entrance to a larger underground complex forgotten by time. As we proceeded further into the forbidden realm, lying beneath what was once Yechnogoth's throne, it became evident that Argan, or whoever first settled Zochthanol, had received some help to build it all. Oh, I don't like this place. It feels as if something is waiting to ambush us in the darkness. Heh, <laughs> darkness. Those elves aren't very smart after all. Why would they think that sending one of their sun-loving youths would be any help to us? Keep your mouth shut, decrepit lich. We are being far more lenient than anyone would be with those who deal with your unnatural minions and these filthy apes. Who are you calling filthy apes, you? Calm down, everyone. If we are to explore these caverns, we'll need to stay together. What are you looking for? Some kind of artifact? Rocks? Spiders? We believe these caves beneath the Dark Citadel may have once been used by our enemies. If that is the case, they may have left behind scrolls, artifacts, or anything else that could provide us with hints. This is no time to fight amongst ourselves. Just stay alert and let us see what we can find. We will help you as best we can, Elf. Okay, everyone has to survive now. Objective, follow the path and explore underground. And Gala, Selenia, Malkashar, Horro, and Kiara must all survive. Now it's 68 turns, no early finish bonus, so exploring is going to be interesting. I've got a ton of gold, probably more than I would realistically need. Well, let's see. 40% of gold carried over to next scenario, so maybe I can save most of it. In any case, we're not going to find out just now, because I'm going to take a break here. Yep, that's right. I just did a lot of voiceover work, so my throat needs a rest. See you next time.